Hello and greetings on the internet, wherever you may be. This is the Cheapskate Show, and it's a show dedicated to common sense frugal living. Today this talk is going to be about something that concerns me greatly as I see it has negatively impacted quite a few people. Since I frequent a large metropolitan area, I've noticed that there are a lot of people indigent and homeless that are there. And even though this is supposed to be a cheapskate and frugal type show, I must address the point that sometimes people who are non-frugal and are carefree with their money are moved into this classification of people because of their reckless conduct and living way above their means and not having the correct information to help them move beyond that and recover from their their problems. I see a lot of panhandlers in the city and a lot of homeless people. These people are in bad shape. And I know that some of them are there under no fault of their own and some of them are there because of bad decisions and then again there's some that are there because they're perpetrating and they're just operating a scam. I'm quite sure you've probably seen and I call them the pros. You could be someplace and you can see them looking at you and they can see, and then you can see them size you up and then they want to, they're deciding whether or not they're going to ask you for something. You just have to position yourself away from these people because nine times out of ten they have more money in their pocket than you do. They aren't the real people who truly need help and they give the true unfortunate people a bad name by running a scam. Unfortunately, to wait to discern against the pros and against the genuine people who need help, take a look at their shoes. Stand back if you can and observe them for a period of time. See what they do. See if they're in the same spot all the time. I remember once up there at, in Atlanta at the intersection of I-285 and Cascade Road. There was a guy who was a real pro. He even had props. And... He was a guy masquerading as car trouble. This guy had car trouble every day of the week. But he was taking advantage of the large throughput of cars coming through because nobody paid him much attention as people were in a hurry to go where they wanted to go. You have to watch out for these kind of people. The major thing you want to do, and I'm going to get to talking about the, the bad folk, and I'm going to talk about the good people who are just caught in that situation. Uh is just stay away from the pros who are trying to get you to come there like come here I need your help all this type of thing you know you have to be discerning on that because you know although you know if you're a person of faith you know if you help somebody you're supposed to be uh, helping them and it's up to them if they're perpetrating a scam because they'll be punished for it but you know you really kind of want your efforts to really go where it might be you might be the difference between that person eating and not eating that day the major thing I guess the best way to help instead of just giving the money to the people who are just asking the money is to find real charity and real organizations and real groups that actually do go out and help the homeless. There's too many organizations out there now that are just collecting money and having administrative fees and sometimes these fees eat up pretty much the whole budget for helping the people. Those people are perpetrating scams and they shouldn't be dealt with. These are businesses perpetrating scams and they shouldn't be dealt with. One interesting thing I saw on uh, the internet it was a couple and they used what disposable money they had and they went to thrift stores and bought backpacks 
and they went to dollar stores and they bought toiletries and other non-perishable food items and they made care packs for homeless and they kept them in their car and as they rode around and they saw somebody who was kind of down on their luck truly down on their luck and you know what these folk look like when you see them truly down on their luck you know they took it took them over there and gave it to them you know it had you know non perishable stuff like peanut butter peanuts those little canned snacks you know little stuff like that that could tie them over till they get a, a good meal some people have even bought Little, little gift certificates from fast food places so they can go get them a meal or better yet some people have even taken them to a fast food place and gotten the meals and stuff there because people are suffering out there wherever it's the fault of them making mistakes and Lord knows everybody makes mistakes I know I have or whether or not it's the, the fault of the economy because yes certain factors in the economy are negatively impacting people Whereas a certain faction thinks that they should go free and not have to pay any taxes, and other people should pay all the taxes, you know, it, it, it's just really messed up here. The thing that you really need to do is try to alleviate the pain and the suffering of those who are truly less fortunate from it, no matter how they got there, because I think I said in one of my previous videos, things may be going well for you today. But tomorrow things may be not going so good for you and you may need the assistance of somebody or some organization that's out there like true food pantries and you know you might be might be in a position where you have to go get public assistance or food stamps or any other type of assistance or medical assistance you know it's it's things are really you know bad out there for a large portion of the population but um, a few things by helping those who are truly in need like the guy who's sleeping under a bridge sleeping in the park sleeping on a bench you know sleeping in a box in these days and times and in this country you know this country's too wealthy to let people be in this position and the regular population of this country is too spoiled and they make petty and snap judgments against people when they could just as easily be in that position themselves I forget who it was that said this but they said that most of us are only one or two paychecks away from being homelessness and being in bad shape does this fit you I'm quite sure it fits most of the people who are listening to me now. I don't mean this to be a downer, but this is just kind of like a reality check. I talk about how to be frugal and how to be cheap to help save you from a lot of the problems and the pitfalls of this rampant consumerism that exists in our society. Where it's just too many people who like to keep up with the Joneses, have the latest car, have the the, the, the expensive shoes on their feet uh, have the latest threads on their behinds I mean it, it's, it's madness because all this stuff really is meaningless but people judge people's character by the clothing the clo the clothing the housing the cars that people drive does that really make sense to you instead of looking at what type of person that they really are I'll give you an example the first house that I ever bought in Atlanta was in a subdivision. It was a big mistake buying in that subdivision. But then again, maybe it was a mistake, but it was also an education. I got a chance to see truly how class conscious people really were in there. I bought, I built the house new, and it was from a builder that had two classifications of houses. One was called the 1600, 1600 series house. And it was a big, big, big fancy house uh, that was, you know, maxed out. That was the favorite word back then, maxed out. And then there was the 800 series house, which was a scaled down version of the house, the same house. It didn't cost as much and it wasn't quite as big. This created a class war in the subdivision. You know, the people at the 1600 series houses thought they were better than everybody else. And the... 
people with the 800 series houses, we were the low life. And trust me, I had an 800 series house. It was a nice house, very nice house, very well built. You know, even though it had problems, it was pretty well built. And the people there acted ridiculous. The neighborhood didn't have a neighborhood association, but they wanted to have one put in. And of course, this was so that the people in the 1600 series houses could go around and dictate to the other people how things were. We had the stereotypical housewives in the station wagons roving around to see who was in conformity or in non-conformity to the so-called new agreed upon association rules. I remember it was Halloween and I had Halloween decorations out for my kids and I lived in a half cul-de-sac and I had typical Halloween decorations. I had a couple of bales of hay, a scarecrow and some stalks out there. They made a snide comment at the homeowners meeting. No bales of hay in the subdivision. I mean, they, these people thought that they were real high-end folks. They were, they were maxed out to the hill. They followed the pure definition of the twenty and twenty-five thousand dollar millionaire. They knew they were barely holding on by the skin of their teeth, but at the same time, they tried to have the appearance that they were doing so well. There was only one guy in the subdivision that if an economic meltdown were to occur, that he wouldn't have to move. He owned his house free and clear. It was an old retired longshoreman. And I'm quite sure he's probably passed on now. It's been years since uh been over there in that subdivision. But everybody else was perpetrating, and this was the only real guy over there. Paid for his house cash. And he had an 800 series house. He didn't have a 1600 series house. He was exercising a frugal lifestyle. I believe he had a, a same car. He didn't have a maxed out car. You know, people, you know, it's, it's, it's just really, it's really screwed up how people think out there. You know, by, by living at the, at the ends of their, their income. You know, you need to be able to govern yourselves properly when you handle your finances and be careful about who you indebt yourself to. There's a biblical phrase out there and I can't and I'm not going to even begin to try to 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 quote it but it likens debt to being enslaved because you're at the mercy of your debtor. This is so true. You need to consider this as you go out and go embark into rampant consumerism because you will be pretty much like the guy who lives in the box or lives on the bench or lives under the viaduct on the bridge if you don't govern your finances appropriately. Don't try to keep up with the Joneses. Use common sense when you go out and buy and don't try to spend all of the money you have Go and keep some in reserve and don't go out and go keep up with the Joneses. The Joneses are fools. Take care of yourself and take care of your family. These things are important. Not trying to keep an, up an appearance to impress those who don't give a damn about you anyway and would pass over you if you were lying in the street and in need of help. Well, this is my societal rant for the day. If this has given you pause for thought and pause to think, please like and share this video. And also, and as always, as I say in most of my videos, go up to the top of your video and where you see HTTP colon forward slash forward slash highlight and copy that and paste it to Facebook Instagram, uh, all the social media sites that are out there and uh, post a message and say here's something to think about while you think that you're so high and mighty. Remember and I think and I, I'm not going to quote this either but there's something that says there you are but for the grace of God. 
you know nothing is guaranteed to anyone out there good things and bad things can happen to anyone so if you see someone who is down on their luck don't berate them don't make them feel lower than low because tomorrow you could be in that same position thanks for watching and please listen to our channel as we try to have positive upbeat messages on how to be frugal and be cheap and not spend all your money so you won't be in bad shape see you next time